In this video, I'll show the modifications that I made to my rocket mass heater so that it could burn pellets. If you're not familiar with the original modifications that I made in the past, I recommend you watch the original video first. The first part of the design was to make a grate that the pellets could burn on, but allow the ash to fall through. I welded up some steel bar and came up with this design. Eventually, the steel will burn out, so I'll probably need to make one from stainless. With the first prototype feed hopper, I used a piece of 2 inch pipe and cut a 45 degree angle in it. The objective was to have it rest on the grate and to self feed as the pellets burned away from the base of the feeder. It burned and fed the pellets, but there wasn't enough material burning to give the stove that really hot rockety sound. Part of the issue was the pellets were not spreading far enough across the grate. For the second prototype, I switched over to a piece of steel C-channel. On the open side, I made a sliding door so that I could adjust the amount of material that could come out of the hopper. By having a wider hopper, I got a better spread of material across the grate, but still not quite enough to give it a good rockety burn. There were also two major issues with this design that I discovered. First, by having the feed hopper in a vertical position, the supply barrel was too close to the hot barrel and it got far too hot. Second, as the hopper emptied, the remaining pellets would start to burn at the base and the fire would start the draft back up through the feed hopper. With the final prototype, I set the feeder at a 45 degree angle and added a gate to it so I could fine tune the rate that the pellets fed onto the grate. I also repositioned the grate so it sat at about a 30 degree angle. This allowed for the pellets to slide out further and cover more of the grate. In a minute I'll show a diagram and explain how this operates. This is a grate dropping into place above the ash pit and the feed hopper setting on top of it. The wall of the bricks has been removed and the grate from the hopper acts as the wall. After filling up the hopper with pellets, I like to light the system with a torch. It gets the fire going quickly and helps to start a proper draft in the chimney without having to burn papers in the stack. Once I know the pellets will burn on their own, I install a restrictor plate and the system will continue to burn as long as there is a supply of pellets. Looking at a side profile diagram, I've removed the rear wall of the existing feed tube and the cover over the ash pit. Next I installed the grate over the ash pit and then the feed hopper. It's best to close the feed grate before filling the hopper so the pellets don't go flying out at the end. After lighting the pellets and they start to burn on their own, I put on the restrictor plate. Taking a closer look, the restrictor plate is a key component to getting a good burn. It restricts the amount of air that is entering through the top and forces the fresh air directly over the burning pellets. By adding this restriction, more air is brought up through the grate essentially stoking the coals that are in the grate, gasifying the newer pellets that are on top of them, and then the gas burns in the tunnel. Any pellets that do happen to fall through the grate end up in the ash tray. The fresh air that is traveling over the tray helps to burn these remaining pellets. To see the fire, I'll remove the restrictor plate and you'll see the fire start to dance around because it's no longer drafting properly. This view is a great example of showing how the newer pellets that are feeding in are starting to gasify over the hot ambers and then burn in the tunnel. Pellets usually feed in by a clump, so it looks like it smolders a bit, but the smoke ignites and burns in the burn tunnel. This shot is down inside the ash pit. I have a gap that's a bit too large between the grate and the wall, so a few large pieces are falling through. This is looking down through the hopper after the pellets have burned, but there are still some ambers burning on the grate. Air is also drafting through the hopper, so there is nothing back drafting through it. After the system has cooled down, there is hardly any ash left on the grate. Any cinders that were in the ashtray have burned off, and I'm left with fine particles. 
This tray is holding ash from a 40 pound bag of pellets. The stove burns hotter with the pellets than any of the wood I used in it last year. My IR thermometer reads the barrel temperature to be 500 degrees Fahrenheit halfway up and around 300 near the base. With the wood it maxed out at 500 near the top. It's burning around 8 pounds an hour which is roughly 64,000 BTUs per hour. One problem I'm finding is that the center chimney is falling apart, but I'll deal with that in another video. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Click on the links in the description to follow us on Facebook or Google+. Thanks for watching.